Hey, it's your main man, Sabado. Uh, welcome to or welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you've been here before, welcome back. We're glad to have you. And if you've this is your first time, then welcome to the channel. Um, I'm Sabado. Um, I had the opportunity or the good fortune to uh, find financial independence at 51 and, and subsequently retire. And so what I do on this channel is I just use this as an opportunity to share with you uh, key pieces of my journey in hopes that it'll help you live your best life. Um, but before I get started, there's a couple things, a couple housekeeping things I want to I want to get out of the way. First one is I, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to uh, all of our subscribers. We recently reached uh, 300 subscribers, uh, which is uh, a phenomenal feat considering it's only been uh, about three or four months that we've that we've been on air. So uh, I've had about 50,000 um, views on this channel and about 300 people, a uh, little over 300 people have said that they want to get regular updates on the information that, that we're discussing. And so, again, I think the I think the more you listen to the content that's that's put up there, some of it is very, very retirement specific, but most of it is how do you take control of your life, live your best life today? Um, and the other one, other thing I wanted to update you on before I get into the meat of the topic is uh, just an update on the studio. You know, you can see I'm still here in my makeshift studio um, filming because my studio still, uh, as you know, it, it fell, it, uh, it, it came apart. And so I had to fix it. So what I've, what I've done, just a little bit of an update is I've, I've patched up all of the holes um, and gave a few days for that to uh, dry, sanded that down. I've, I've textured and painted it. So now all I'm waiting to do is put the shelves and everything back up so that way we can get back, get everything back in there, get filming again and, and get you all back to what you're used to. But, you know, I could complain about it. Woe is me. But the fact is, is, um, you know, it's the middle of the week and I'm working on a uh, music room and not going into the office and, and, and dealing with a knucklehead boss. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I'll take a, a broken down studio any day of the week. So, um, so again, so just to kind of for, and, and for those of you that are, that are new to the channel, the one thing I did want to mention is that this is a channel where, um, I try to bring, uh, my journey in an accessible way to people. So those of you that are thinking about, you know, how can I get out of this rut? How can I, um, get myself into a better position. You know, I'd like to retire sometime, but I don't think I'll be able to. But what else can I do to make sure that I'm optimizing my life? And so a lot of what I talk about is less about the specifics of actually retiring, because I do realize that, you know, the fact is a majority of people aren't going to be able to retire early. And, and most folks will find themselves thinking about retirement around 65, the, the regular retirement age. But there are other pieces of the puzzle um, to the life puzzle that I think are, are critically important that we talk about as well, because at the end of the day, it's it's about having a good life. And it's not just me having a good life. It's not just you having a good life. It's not just certain people having a good life. It's everybody having a good life. And unfortunately, not everybody has the same access and, and has had historically the same access uh, to information and opportunities. So my goal is uh, nothing more than to provide information that helps perhaps unlock the door to opportunities that you might have. Um, some of you may have seen in some of the recent shorts that I had that uh, there are people that have opinions about opening up and, and creating that access to everybody and, and have things to say about it. So I, I encourage you, uh, number one, to review the comments, but number two, leave comments on, on your thoughts on um, things that I may have missed or, or things that may enhance the channel, because I think there's a, uh, I, I think there's a great opportunity for us to all learn from each other. I certainly don't have all the answers. I don't purport to have all the answers, uh, but I do have the experience of having, um, been able to retire at 51 and, and I share that. Um, and there are experts in, in other things. And so if you have expertise in something that you think might be constructive for the channel, please go ahead and share it. And I respond to all the comments and, you know, you may have noticed that there are a couple of comments that have been taken down from the channel, but I just take those down because they're either offensive or they're not constructive. Um, you know, sometimes people put things up that are uh, not constructive thinking it's funny, but for some people, 
people, it's incredibly hurtful. And so um, no need to have people come to this channel, leave with their feelings or to feel like they're somehow less than because perhaps they didn't reach the same goal that I did. Uh, because we all have different goals. So I, I don't, I'm not going to tolerate that on the channel. I'm going to take that stuff down and, and some of that. And if your comments uh, were some of the ones that were taken down, then it's an opportunity for introspection uh, for you. So, uh, but I'll leave that there and uh, and kind of get into it. So, I, you know, I was, I've been thinking, I, I think a lot of us have, uh, you, or many of you probably have recognized that I've been in a bit of a transitory phase for the last uh, period of time. You know, you get to these different points uh, in your journey and you just start, different things start to hit a little bit different. You try to understand things a little bit different. And I've been doing that in terms of retirement because I have this time. Um, and it's funny because I, I liken retirement to a person who is in debt. And, and or living outside of their means. And, and here's what I mean. You know, when I what used to happen to me was there was a point in time when I had a high credit card debt. I couldn't afford my lifestyle. I was trying to be like the Joneses. I wasn't even trying to keep up with them. I was just trying to be those suckers. And, you know, I'm trying to be the Joneses and I was outside of my means. And so whenever I'd get a bonus or I'd get a, a tax return or I'd get some money that's outside of the normal cycle of my biweekly paycheck, you know, I'd be excited that I got that bonus. But then I'd have to spend that bonus on paying bills. I'd have to spend on paying off my credit cards. I'd have to spend on paying my car, paying a late mortgage or, or whatever the case was. Um, so I never really got to the point where I was able to truly appreciate the bonus until I started, I dug myself out of that hole. And so by taking some responsible steps and getting myself out of that financial hole, I've been able to, or I was able to get myself to a point where I got that bonus and was able to take that bonus money and, and stock, sock that money away. And, um, and I, and I think when you, when you retire, it's the same thing with your time and whether you're retired or not, time is your most valuable asset because once you go, you go. You don't know when you're going to go. You don't know how you're going to go. All you know is that you're going to go. And then for most people that go slowly, whether it's through an illness or something of that nature, the first thing they do is they look back at everything they, they should have, would have, could have done. Um, if you talk to people who were in their 70s and 80s, a lot of times they'll be very clear about what they wish they would have done different uh, if they had a chance to do it all over again. And so uh, so what that tells me is that your time is really important and what you don't want to do is wait until you retire to maximize that time because what will happen to you is the same thing that happened to me, which kind of got me in these thoughts. Um, so when I, when I first retired, the first thing I want to do is I want to do everything that I didn't have time to do right away. So I, I went out and bought a piano right away. I want to do substitute teaching. So I went out and did substitute teaching right away. I started picking up hobbies right away. I started creating obligations for myself and schedules for myself right away because I thought to myself, wow, I have all of this time. I'm just going to go out and, and fill my time with everything. And, and over time, what you start to realize is that, you know, this not working thing, this retirement thing, this thing goes for a long time. Assuming I live a, a long, healthy life, this thing goes for a long time and I don't have to do everything um, right away. But the other piece of that transition is that not only was I looking at my time and, and, and trying to fill my time with things that I didn't have time to do or, you know, pay those bills that I didn't have an opportunity to pay, uh, early when I was working, um, the, you know, other people came in and tried to take my time, whether it's through different types of jobs, different types of consulting, different types of obligations and so on. And even even some of the friendships create uh, schedules uh, for you because it's every Tuesday you do this, every Wednesday you do that, every Thursday you do this and so on. Or if, if they call, then they, there's an expectation that you're going to be able to do what it is that, that they're doing. Or if they need help, you're going to be Ex they're gonna, there's going to be an expectation that you could just jump up and help because you have the time because you're retired. And, you know, the fact is that's just not the case. And so I want to talk a little bit about some of the uh, some of my thoughts around around time and, and give you some advice 
on how to manage that because it's going to happen to you. It happens to everybody. It happens when you're working. Um, you know, you think about the times that uh, your boss calls you up and tells you about a meeting that's going to happen at a particular time and you can't say, I'm not going to be there. In fact, I had a situation once where the head guy at one of the hospitals I was responsible for called a meeting. And uh, I had something, I had a, a scheduling conflict, which was critical. And so I declined the meeting. And so everybody around me, they were shuttered up and they were nervous and they were, oh my goodness, I don't believe you did that. He scheduled a meeting and you didn't go. But, and I, I just said, I had a conflict. And it's, what's interesting is I told the guy who scheduled the meeting, he got it. He's like, all right, I'm glad you told me. But other people would have just, wrecked everything else so they could be in that meeting and it's the same thing that that people expect you to do because because you have the time so you know so when you start looking at your time uh i want to i want to share a few thoughts on that but also um give you some 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 tips or some tools that that have worked for me and continue to work for me in terms of safeguarding my time and so I, i'm going to go through that now so you know the first thing you want to do is you've got to protect your time um, you know, I, it's, it's, I, I'll tell you a story. I'll walk you through a story of a friend of mine who recently retired. I have a buddy of mine. He's a couple years older than me, uh, recently retired. He retired early. He's older than I am, but he's still considered uh, retiring early. And when he retired, he started doing a bunch of research. So he didn't go through the same process that I did or my wife and I did in planning our retirement. He was a little more uh, expeditious or more efficient in his planning, and he was a little bit more efficient in his process. Um, and so he didn't do, he, there were some things that he missed as he was leading up to his retirement. And so one of those was that there is a pension that he's eligible for that won't be, um, that he wouldn't get until he was 65 unless, unless, he does two more months of work. So if he goes back and works there two more months, and it's a job, it's a it's a unskilled labor job. So it's working through the union hall and, and some of that. And it's it, there's some complexity to it, but it's it's really that's not germane to this conversation. Um, so he uh, about 20 years ago, he's working through this union, left, uh, went into something that was more lucrative and a, and a better career choice for him. But now that he's retiring, he went back and looked and realized, you know, I have about two months left and I get this other pension. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a pretty significant amount of money and it was worth it. He laid it out and I'm not, I don't want to tell all of his business out here, but he laid it out to me and I said, you know, that's a no brainer. So he went to do that, went to go do those, those two months worth of work. Um, and, you know, it's funny because once he did that, um, other people saw that he was still available. So people started to come up to him um, and ask him about other stuff. And so what's, what's funny is that um, he has a friend who's a real estate agent. And so the friend that's a real estate agent came up to him and asked him, um, hey, look, I have clients that are looking to move into houses and some of these houses have minor things that need to be done so i need a handyman would you be interested in being my handyman now a little background on this friend this is the friend that's always caught up in some type of project he just redid a bathroom and a bedroom in his house he's thinking about putting an elevator inside of his house i mean it's just the guy is the guy's always busy i always tell him you know you need to just go ahead and retire because he's he's too busy to be retired uh, but I, I think that's his demon to deal with because he's he just recently retired. So he's still going through all these processes that that we've been talking about amongst us for uh, the last few months. Um, but I told him, I said, look, here's the problem is you have a friend who has clients who need somebody to do something. And while you may be comfortable with telling your friend that you're not going to do it. The problem is, is that your friend has clients who have demands in order for this person to continue to be credible in the eyes of their clients. They've got to deliver on things that they say are possible. And so if they come to you and ask you for um, if you can do some handyman work for them and you're just saying, no, I just don't want to do it because <clears throat> I don't feel like doing anything on a Tuesday. Well, 
what ends up happening is you're going that person is now going to be under pressure and one of a few things is going to happen either a your friend is going to try to pressure you maybe politely but they're going uh, they're going to try to pressure you into uh, into doing the work um you know or there's going to be or there's going to be some frustration or you're going to be you're going to be busier doing work making less money um than you were when you were actually working so why even work? And so I, not my, not my ax to grind, but he mentioned it to me. And I've always believed that as a friend, part of my responsibility is to speak truth uh, to my friends, because I think I never want to be the guy that something bad happens down the road. And I, I could see the train, I could see the train about to collide and I didn't say anything. And so I told him, it appears to me that you still want to work. If you didn't like your last job, then that's not necessarily the impetus to retire. But what is it that you're going to retire to? And so we, we had some of some of that conversation. And so he's still mulling it over. But I, I think until you really have full control of your time, it's hard to understand how valuable that that time is. And so, you know, it, it got me got me to thinking about our conversations here and what, um, you know, what what we're trying to do in terms of living our best lives, because even, you know, even if you're still working, you still got people, you still got demands on your time. You still have, uh, you know, what, what do we call them? Uh, non um, non character, uh, non character actors um, that are. Um, that are that are in the film and so that are that that are going to try to take your time they're going to try to get you they're going to want to talk to you they're going to want you to do stuff they're going to want to spend time they're going to want you to go and do different things they're going to need favors they're going to need all of these things and so you know so I, I think if we're not going to retire let's get as close to it as we can and let's make sure that we control all of our own time and not let other people control our time because they will try to do that. And that's why work pays you for it because time is so valuable that it's the only thing that companies actually pay you for. It's kind of funny when you think about it, um, unless you want a class action lawsuit or something like that and they pay you. But the only thing companies pay people for is work, which tells you how valuable time is. So, so here's a couple of pieces of advice. Uh, number one, and I, I said this at the top, is you got to protect your time, um, and and time is your most valuable asset, more valuable than money, more valuable than gold, more valuable than jewels, because you can always go out and get any other resource or asset, but you can't go out and get more time, um, and so you have to you have to put boundaries up around your time because if you don't put boundaries around your time, other people are going to take it. Um, so you have to protect your time, and that and so so that's number one. Protect your time. Always think about what's the time it's going to take me and ask yourself the question, what do I want to do? Had this person not asked me that, what would I have wanted to do with that time? And take care of yourself, you know, take care of yourself, take care of you. If you need to do something with your time, then you do what you need to do, because, you know, the fact is that person is going to find somebody else to help them out with their with their issue, whatever it is. But you need to protect your time because your time is your time. And you never want to be in a position where you look back and say, well, I could have done this or I should have done that or I could have done this. Uh, number two, you know, proactively think about how you would spend your time if you didn't have obligations. You know, I like to make the comment. It's, it's kind of halfway joking, but not really, where I say you can do whatever you want or nothing at all. Um, but the, the fact is, is most people don't have an idea most people will talk about, I can't wait, or you're lucky that you retired. I can't wait until I retire. But the thing a lot of people haven't contemplated is what am I going to do with my time when I do retire? And I, I think that um, people go on vacations. And when they're on those vacations, what are they doing? They're thinking about work. They're making work phone calls. I see people all the time at the grocery store, at the, I'd like to say at the mall, but I'd be disingenuous because I haven't been to the mall in a while. 
But, you know, you go out, you see people and they're, they're engaged in, in work stuff. And, you know, they're away from work. They're on vacation. They're hanging out with their friends. They're doing fun stuff, but they're doing work things because they haven't thought about. And it's easy to say, well, you know, work, they won't let me go. They won't let me go. They won't let me go. But they absolutely will. Just don't answer the phone. What, are they going to fire you because you didn't answer the phone because you're on vacation? You know, most of the time, that's a that's an artificial uh, barrier that we put up for ourselves and, and having to deal with um, not knowing how we're going to deal with our time. So proactive, we go out and think about it. If, if I could sit back and if money wasn't an object and if I had all the time in the world, what would I do with my time? Or think about when somebody's asking you to go and do something. Think about what else would I rather do? It's easy to feel like that's selfish, but taking care of yourself is selfish. And you owe it to yourself to be selfish because for 40, 50, 60 hours during the week, all of your time is taken up by somebody else. And so you have to be selfish in order to take it on your time. And it's and it's it's incumbent upon you to make sure you have at least thought through and contemplated how uh, you want to spend that time. So think about how you'd spend it if you if you if you know you had didn't have any obligations. And then the last one, and I'll, I'll stop after this one, is learn how to say no. You know, it's a lot of times we I, I never really quite understood. No, I'm not going to say that. That that that'd be disingenuous. Um, you know, you have to you have to be able to say. No, I'm not going to do that. And you don't necessarily have to tell them why, because sometimes you just don't want to hang out with certain people. And so you don't want to say, hey, I don't want to hang out with you, so I'm not going to do it. So there's no need to be rude. But if you don't want to do something, then don't do it. Don't go out. You know, Don't go play golf with the people you don't want to go play golf with. Don't go to movies to see a movie that you don't want to see. Don't go and hang with somebody that... Um, you know, that doesn't make you feel good. That doesn't that's not filling your cup. You know, learn how to say no, because as soon as you have more time, time is one of those things, you know, time to the world is like money to the rest of us. So time is once you have some free time and you're not doing anything with it. Other people see that and they're like, wow, this person doesn't have any time. They have some free time. They don't have anything to do with their time. So I'm going to ask them to do this thing over here. See if they have time for that. And just because you're not, let's say you're retired, just because you're not working doesn't mean you have time for that. And, you know, the easiest thing, uh, it's funny. I used to have this, this thing that I would say, and I'd say for you and say, they'd say, well, I, you know, can I borrow some money? I don't have any money for you. Do you have time? I don't have time for you because it comes down to being that specific. There's in the same moment in time, two or three things may come up. One of those things I may want to do. The other one I don't want to do. And then if it's if more, two or more things come up, figure out the one you want to do and then do that and then let other people get over. It. Like I always say, you know, you're just going to have to be mad. Uh, because you're gonna, you got to do what's right for you. If, if you don't do what's right for you, then who are you doing what's right for? And again, I, I get it. I'm not, I'm not here to tell people don't take care of your kids, don't take care of your job, don't take care of your responsibilities, don't take care of your spouse. I'm not. This, it's not that kind of party. Um, so I don't, I don't even want to, I don't, I don't even want to go down that path. But what I, what I do want to say is that when you have a choice, when, when everything else is taken care of. And you have an opportunity to take care of yourself, take care of yourself. You owe it to yourself. If you don't do it, uh, then you'll find yourself frustrated. And the, the hard part is you can't run away from yourself. You can run away from everybody else. You can run away from me. You can, you can unsubscribe from this channel, but you can't, run, you can't unsubscribe from yourself. So always think about that and just think about learning how to say no. Because if you, if you, if you learn how to say no... Uh, then you feel liberated. And if you feel liberated, then you have more control of your time. And isn't the only thing we want really more control of our time and more control of our life? So, so again, that's that's about all I had for today. I just wanted to, again, jump in here. Um, I like to make sure I give a mid midweek update so we're so we're kind of on the same page. And, and you know, I know some of you probably pay closer attention to, than others on, on different dynamics in the channel. And I wanted to let you know what was going on and um, and I know that the, the studio, um, I, I was just waiting for that one subscriber to say, hey, I don't see that Tupac or that Biggie uh, uh, thing behind you, um, figurine behind you. And it's because it's it's in the studio. But, you know, it'll be back 
It'll be the N-O-T-O-R-I-O-U-S. You just lay down slow. But anyway, that's about all I had. Um, you know, if you, but if you, if you like this content or you thought any of this is helpful, let me know. Um, you know, leave me, leave me a note in the comments. Let me know where you're from too. I, I like to know where people are from. I know we've got Northeast Florida in the house. I know we got some folks from the UK in the house. I know we got some folks from Texas in the house. But let me know where you're from. Um, I think that uh, there's a, you know, there's this, the information that we talk about is universal. Um, again, it's, it's, it's really me giving, uh, what I've learned and, and what I've experienced in my journey and also point you in the direction of being able to, to find the help that you need, because again, not everybody's going to retire early and it's unfortunate because I think more people should, but I, I do understand the realities and the dynamics behind that. But I think there's also an opportunity to, uh, to, to live our best lives, which is what we're striving for. So, um, so again, consider subscribing to the channel if you if you if if it's helpful, and uh, leave a leave something in the comments. Let me know where you're from, and uh, you know. On that note, uh, I don't want to make it longer than it needs to be, so I think we'll cut it here and uh, have a good rest of your day, and we will talk soon.